Hello, and welcome to Programming Like It's 1979. Today, we're going to take a dive into the world of proof assistance, but we're going to do it like a game, because that's what I do here on this channel. In fact, the other day, I made a joke while I was messing around with a certain proof assistant book based book called Programming Language Foundations in Agda, I said something like, stop me from doing a let's play of Programming Languages Foundations in Agda. Well, here we are, and I'm not going to do Programming Language Foundations, and I'm not going to do Software Foundations in Cook, which is another, probably the, the the granddaddy of this type of course in the modern era, I'm going to be doing something called the natural number game. This is written in a proof assistant language called Lean. Uh, Lean on the surface looks like Koch with a lot nicer um, ergonomics. It's, it's almost like if you took Haskell and added a bunch of sugar to sort of make it a little more uh, amenable for proofs. that That's kind of the mission statement of Agda. Maybe we'll take a look at Agda someday. But for right now, we're going our interface to the world of proof assistance is going to be through this game. You can, of course, play along if you want, or you can play it yourself. The URL for the game is right there at the tippy top of the screen, and I'm also going to leave it down in the program uh, notes. All you need is a web browser. They do suggest Chrome, but Safari should work also. Uh, although this game is it played entirely within your browser? One of the reasons I was doing this is I wanted to know more about Lean as a language. And I want to assure you, you can, in fact, type the uh, the exercises here into your text editor, into a, a Lean environment, and it will work. The, what they've done here in the browser is, is nothing short of uh, amazing. And that's one of the nice things about Lean is it's really designed from the get-go to be able to be run in a browser environment or in a more traditional editor environment. There are a few minor differences between the the uh, the the proof assistant web version and the one you would get running in an environment. So over here, what you're looking at is my editor on the left. You could see I have a cursor here on this line and on the right hand side of the screen, you should see something that says tactic state one goal that shows you the thing I'm trying to prove. And then as I move through the proof, it shows you the current state of the proof until we reach the end. The end here is actually uh, uh, something where I've written sorry, which basically means admit this proof. I'm not actually going to do it. All right, let's go. And I, all I'm going to do here, I don't want to spoil the entire game because I think it's, it's worth playing. I'm going to just go through the first few levels. I'm going to go through the uh, the tutorial, probably the addition levels, and we'll see how we feel. Maybe the multiplication levels too. Uh, but the game covers a number of things, including functional programming, propositions. Uh, it's it's just great. Enough talking. Let me get into the game. So on the right hand side here, we have a map of the world of the things you're going to be learning, and on the left hand is all of the text. So let's jump into the tutorial world here. And they're going to start introducing the tactics we're going to be using. So the first tactic they introduce is called REFL or reflexivity. And I'm not going to read all this text. You should do it yourself and actually read it and learn a little bit. So over here uh, on the right hand side, you can see our goal that we're trying to prove in this tutorial level is a lemma or a theorem. Um, called, uh, it's not, I don't think it's called example one, but the actual text of the lemma is x times y times z equals x times y plus z. Excuse me, x times y plus z. Um, well, obviously, we have the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. That sounds like it's already proven. We have to say why we think it's proven, and it, we think it's proven via this tactic called reflexivity. Both sides of the equal sign are the same, therefore QED, essentially. We end the line with a comma, and the proof is complete, and now we can go on to the next level. The second tactic they introduce is called rewrite. Rewrite takes a 
hypothesis. In here, we've got y equals x plus 7, and can substitute that hypothesis for the correct term anywhere it's used inside the thing you're trying to prove. So here, the thing we're trying to prove is 2 times y equals 2 times x plus 7. We know by this hypothesis that y equals x plus 7, so we're going to substitute x plus 7 in for this y. We do that by saying rw for rewrite and the name of the tactic, which is h. And then we're going to end with a comma. Now we have 2 times x plus 7 equals 2 times x plus 7. Same thing on both sides of the equal sign. So we can say reflexivity. By reflexivity, this is proven. There's a discussion here of the piano axioms, the, the definitions of the natural numbers, which basically say, and I'm not a mathematician, so I apologize if I'm getting some of the terminology wrong, um, there is a value zero, and then there is a value which is the number after zero, defined by essentially recursion or induction more properly. Uh, from those two statements, from those two minimal statements, you can derive uh, most or all, you know, I, I don't want to make that promise, but you can derive a heck of a lot of number theory just from those two axioms. All right, well, we can see here that our hypothesis actually appears, or one of the terms of our hypothesis actually appears in the thing we're trying to prove, in our goal. So let's try rewriting it. Successor of b equals successor of b. That's proven by reflexivity. And you're going to see this. Um, it's kind of the funny thing about proof assistance is we think of, of mathematical proofs as being these things that are deeply thought about and deeply understood. And, and I think they are when you're a mathematician. When you're a overgrown monkey like I am, however, you can just kind of throw darts at the boards of these proof assistants and the computer just kind of heavily sizing. <laughs> okay, fine, I'll prove this for you. Are you satisfied now? Obviously, that's really only true at the simplest levels, and these are tutorial levels, so that's why this is happening. Piano defined addition a plus b by induction on b, which is a plus z. So he has a theorem, add zero, a plus zero equals a. So that's kind of like identity for addition is what I would think of it as. A plus 1 equals the successor of A. We're being asked to essentially rewrite this. Ah, so we've so this is an example where they're giving you um, theorems that you can use. And throughout this game, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be proving some theorems and then as we prove them, they're going to show up over here on the left. So you can see here we have theorem statements, tutorial world, and then here are the two theorems we have to work with in this tutorial level. And that's really the point of this fourth tutorial level. And we could see we have these two theorems, add successor and add zero. Well, we've got successor of zero and successor of a for that matter up here in our goal. So logically, Let's try to get rid of that successor of zero. And sure enough, we did. We pulled it out. Let me walk through that. So as I move the cursor to the left and right of the comma, essentially, this was the state before, a plus successor of zero. And then as soon as I move it to the end of this statement, we get successor of a plus zero. We kind of move the whole statement into the parentheses of the successor, or you can think of it as pulling that successor out to the beginning. Um, so now we have a plus zero, and we have this other theorem here, add zero, which allows us to say a plus zero equals a, rewrite add zero, and now we should have successor of a equals successor of a, if I don't have a typo, and that is proved by reflexivity. Those are the tutorial levels for the natural number game. So now we're going to go back to the main menu and let's move on to addition world. So I mentioned earlier the fact that your theorems are, can all be found up here on the left. There's something else that can be found here too, which is the tactics pull down. And the tactics talk about and have explanations of each of the tactics that you're going to be using. 
And I really like this. It's a quick reference, both for the things just to tell you that they exist, but more importantly, it's giving you a brief explanation of what the computer is trying to do when you ask it to use one of these tactics. So I find this really helpful. As someone who's done some of these courses uh, before, it's very easy to view these things as just kind of magic incantations. And uh, despite what I was saying about being able to throw darts at the wall, the goal of all this is to gain an intellectual understanding of the natural numbers. And this helps you do that. So we're looking at Edition World. We're going to be talking a brief review of what we've got. And they, in fact, are recommending at this point that you read those tactic descriptions and read the theorem statements. But now we're going to start really getting into it. We're going to start by using induction, which is the first I don't want to say it's the first really powerful tactic. Uh, certainly it's the first one that I think a layman would think of as more complicated. And the thing we're trying to prove here is zero plus n equals n. Now, wait a minute, we have a theorem already that says a plus zero equals a. So isn't that the same as zero plus a equals a? Short form, no, it's not. Um, we have not yet established in this world with only these two piano axioms, axioms and these theorems, that addition is commutative. Um, so we haven't established that we can move things to the other sides of the plus sign and, and that they would, would mean the same thing. And so this is a step along that path. So let's, I'm not gonna read all the text and I really do encourage you to, to do so yourself, but let's, uh, Let's take a look. So the syntax for induction, if I recall correctly, is induction. And then we're gonna say what variable we want to run induction on. In this case, there's only one variable in the, uh, in the, the goal, which is n. And then you can give it names um, for what you want it to use its, as the inductive variables. And I'm gonna say nhn for n and the hypothesis n, I'm going to type a comma. And again, let's go here to the instructions on induction, and you can see it gives that syntax there. If you get lost, that's how I got it. Um, and so up here, we can see that our one goal has changed into two goals. Let me go to the left and right of the comma again, right? This is what we're trying to prove, 0 plus n equals n. But when I say I want to do use induction on n, suddenly I have these two goals. There may be some syntax when you do, uh, this is essentially doing case analysis, right? We're doing, we're gonna prove this for the case where n equals zero, and then we'll have an inductive hypothesis that is true if n equals zero, and then we're gonna prove it for all other n, for essentially n plus one, and then we'll use that inductive hypothesis in that proof of n plus one. And once we've done that, we have proven it for all the natural numbers. That's the basic idea behind induction. Incredibly powerful tactic. Can be a little confusing because there's a little bit of the buy your bootstraps or disappearing into a, into a universe of your own creation, but, but it does work and that's what we're going to use. All right, so first we need to prove zero plus zero equals zero. Well, actually, we could just say reflexivity, and I believe that Lean and, in fact, most other theorem provers will simply do the calculation. Since there's no n in here, it's all concrete math, we can just use the definition of the math to reach this conclusion. But let's be um, rigorous here, and we'll rewrite this using the add zero theorem. Now we have zero equals zero and now we have reflexivity. So I'm new to lean. If I were doing this in Koch, certainly, uh, there's a syntax involving, not indentation, I think bullets, that helps you keep track of which, um, which subcase you're on. And I have not yet, I haven't read all the lean documentation, I'm gonna confess. I haven't found that for lean yet, I tend to get confused. So what I have been doing is I keep track of which case I'm doing just with a comment. Uh, somewhere out there, someone who actually uh, is uh, is good at lean is rolling their eyes. But, you know, like I said at the start, I'm not a mathematician, I'm just a layperson, so. 
All right, so now we want to prove our inductive, not our induction case. What have we got? Zero plus n equals n is our hypothesis, our inductive hypothesis. And zero plus successor of n equals successor of n. Well, we've got plus successor of n. That always tells me that we probably want to use add successor. That has pulled successor of n out. Ah, and now we cannot use add zero because we have zero plus n instead of n plus zero. But we do have this inductive hypothesis. We can just use the rewrite command with h, our inductive hypothesis. That should rewrite it. Unknown identity, oh, hn. Right. And now we have the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. Reflexivity, proof is complete. That's the first level of addition world. So now we're going to prove, we still have not, by the way, proven commutativity of addition. All we've proven is that n plus 0 equals 0 plus n. Uh, but that's not the general statement yet. The goal of this level, of this, um, this world, in fact, is to prove uh, the commutativity of addition. But now we're going to prove the associativity of addition, which is a pretty powerful uh, theorem. And this is the idea that if you have three numbers, a, b, and c, it doesn't matter where you put the parentheses. You can group these however you like. Actually, am I wrong about this? I guess this is not an arbitrary... If I had 10 terms, uh, I, I'm not proving it for the general 10 or n term case. You're proving it for the three term case, but then you could apply it as many times as you need to move the uh, parentheses wherever you need. Uh, so, all right, what's our proof? Our proof is a plus b plus c equals a plus parentheses b plus c. All right, so we're going to use induction here. Uh, one of the things that I find, have always found mystifying when doing software foundations, is how do you decide which variable to do induction on? And what will happen is, given some uh, thing you want to prove, you'll pick one of these variables to do induction on. And if you're me, you pick the wrong one, and it's incredibly difficult or possibly impossible to actually complete the proof doing that. You needed to pick the other one. How do you know? Well, so, this one, uh, in several places, I don't know if they do it in this level. In several places, this uh, game just tells you, PS, hint, do induction on this variable. And unlike uh, most of the other, one, other times I've encountered this, they actually give an explanation. And the explanation is something along the lines of, well, since the definition of this operation uh, is defined inductively on the last variable, you should do induction on that last variable. So I really appreciated having that explanation. It's not something that I had ever thought of, uh, again, proving I'm not a mathematician. All right, let's try this. So let's, let's I'm just going to do, I don't think that you have to do induction on any particular variable here, but I'm going to do it. And my here's my logic for, I'm going to do induction on C. And my logic here is that C is inside that set of parentheses. So if I do induction on it, I'm going to get that C to turn into zero, which means I could simplify that term. I think since we proved zero add and add zero, it actually would work fine no matter what I did. So induction C with C and HC. All right, now we can rewrite it with add zero. All right, so if you look here, we can see that this rewrite tactic rewrote the first of those plus zeros, but not the second one. We could deal with this several ways, and they're going to teach this later on in the uh, game. We could add a second add zero, and at this point we could say reflexivity, and this first base case will be proven. Uh, there's something else we can do one note, if you were doing this in your actual lean environment, lean would consider this proven at this point. 
applying the rewrite tactic would actually close out this goal. And the creators of the game have this great note. I think it's a fantastic game design uh, observation that this confused the heck out of people uh, because their goal kind of disappeared out from under them. So their version of these tactics, their version of natural numbers, essentially, um, they weakened the tactics, the rewrite tactics specifically, a little bit so that it forces the user to say reflexivity to kind of get that satisfaction of, yeah, I, f I solved it. But there is another way to do it, and this one will not require that, which is to use the repeat. I don't know if repeat is a tactic or just a directive. We use braces, we say rewrite, add zero, and that's going to rewrite everything inside those, uh, right, it's gonna rewrite the whole thing. And now, and it also happens to close out that part of the proof. So now we just have to prove our inductive case. All right, so by the way, I don't know if, I, I sure hope this is readable. If it's not, boy, am I embarrassed. Now, all the action here is happening up in the upper right part of the screen where it says goal. I probably should have said that 20 minutes ago. All right, so what have we got? A plus B plus successor of C. Uh, again, I'm gonna apply add successor multiple times. What have we got? It looks like that. Oh, I need to move there. Okay, so now we have successor of A plus B plus C and successor of A plus parentheses B plus C. Well, that is our inductive hypothesis. So we can just rewrite. Um, let me show you another bit of terminology. If I say rewrite HC, what will happen is this will turn into this. Uh, but because I'm very type A, I, I would like my final reflexive hypothesis to have no parentheses in it um, or no internal parentheses, even though there's no reason for that. I just, it looks neater to me. Well, we can do that. We can substitute the other way so that this will turn into this. And the terminology for that, we're going to say rewrite and we're going to say slash L for a little left arrow and then the name of our hypothesis. So we're gonna rewrite from right to left. And now we have the same thing on both sides of the equal sign and our proof is complete. All right, we've proven associativity, associativity. Successor add, you might know, let me, look, let me address the elephant in the room. Yes, I am reading these things as successor add rather than suck add. I'm sorry, yes, part of me is 12 years old also, uh, but I figure if I keep saying suck, 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 it's going to sound very silly. So I am going to read these uh, as successor rather than that, uh, just to keep you from giggling every time I read a theorem name. All right, for all natural numbers A and B, we have the successor of A plus B equals the successor of a plus B. So this is very similar to our add zero and zero add. We want to get the left to left and right. Uh, we want to be able to, to, to substitute this no matter where successor uh, is being at, no matter which variable successor is being added to. So let's see. All right, well, I'm going to try induction. Might not even be necessary, but let's give it a go. Uh, in fact, I bet if we use, let me show you why we care about this. If we use the add successor rewrite, then what will happen is the right hand side of our, no, I need to left apply it. The right hand side of our goal changes to M plus successor N, which is literally the opposite of what we're trying to prove here, right? Right, successor A plus B equals A plus successor B. That's not, that's not what we want. So let's do induction, which was our first, my first instinct. So we'll do induction B with B 
hypothesis of B. Is that really, is that the terminology? Should have stayed awake in a math class. Let's rewrite, let's repeat and rewrite all of our add zero stuff. Get rid of those zeros. And now we've proven the base case. So now we're gonna do the inductive case. What have we got? Successor of A plus successor of B equals successor A plus successor B. Okay, so we have that plus successor B. And if I pull that out of the right-hand side, then we actually have the, the literal sub goal that's in our, our uh, inductive hypothesis right there. But then this is different, right? I think we wanna do that again. We could do a repeat. I'll do it this way just to show what that looks like. All right, so now we've got this in two different places. So now let's rewrite using our inductive hypothesis. And we have the same thing on both sides of the equal sign that can be proved by reflexivity. Does this work if you type out reflexivity? That's one thing that you do in Coq is, is the, I don't think there's a, I don't know if there's an abbreviation for it. Certainly the uh, Software Foundations uh, class uses the spelled out word. It looks like it works. Okay, it can be even more. Uh, now I'm wondering, can I do this? I can, ooh. Never pass up an opportunity to be verbose instead of being concise. Yeah, again, somewhere out there, the mathematician is shouting, no! Okay. Oh, and you might notice here, if you rest the cursor on something, you actually get what looks like if you rest it at the end. That's weird. Okay, in this case, I'm getting a, a description of it, and over here, uh, it feels like a little buglet. Ah, let's not worry about it. Onward, A plus B equals B plus A. It sounds so simple, and this is what I find fascinating about number theory as a layperson, is these are all things that we know. You know, we, we learn this stuff in, in like first grade, second grade. Um, but the reason we're given is just that's the way it is. And so here, this actually teaches you why it's the way it is. And I think that's kind of exciting. I'm, I'm just going to do induction at this point because that tactic's been working for me. Again, very instinctive reaction. I, I don't know that I could justify it. Um, we're going to rewrite add zero and we're going to rewrite zero add. And the reason I'm saying that is that We've got zeros on either sides of the plus signs up here. So we'll rewrite both of those at that point. We can prove by reflexivity. Now we've got the inductive case. So what are we gonna do? Again, we've got successor B plus A and A plus successor B. So we have the successor on both sides of the plus sign again. So I'm gonna do the same thing I just did with zero, only I'm going to do it with the successors to pull those out. And now I have A plus B and B plus A. I'm going to rewrite from the right to the left to change this B plus A into an A plus B. Let's do rewrite left HB. And that did it. However, the game has, there we go, needed to think about it. That's commutativity. We've, we've won the game. It's all over. There's no more, oh, there are some more levels. I think having done this video now for, gosh, must be going on half an hour, um, I'm going to stop at the end of Edition World. I'm going to finish Edition World out and not go on to do multiplication function uh, unless people want to see that in the future, partly because I don't want to spoil the game. I really want to encourage you to give this a go yourself. And if my thinking out loud about this has helped you get through the game, I'm, I'm really glad about that. Um, and frankly, this may 
spark an interest in proof assistance or in one of the various books that kind of use teaches you how to use them to prove these things. And if so, that's great. All right, so this is something I think we're going to need. These last two levels in addition world, they're doing because they're needed inside multiplication world. So this is proving that successor of n equals n plus one. Uh, I think this we can just prove by reflexivity. Yeah, okay. And now we can apply, I think it's that. Right, we have now that n plus one. I'm going to rewrite with our hypothesis, hn, right? Yes. And now we have the same thing on each side of the equal sign. Great. All right, last level coming up. Add right commutativity. Let's look at the definition here. For all numbers a, b, and c, a plus b plus c equals a plus c plus b. I don't think we even have to, do we have to do induction for this? I mean, we have addition is commutative. Why can't we just apply commutiv commutivity to do it? Let's see if there's a reason that doesn't work. What happens if we do that? Okay, that moved the C and the A. I think you can give arguments to these. Let's see if I'm right. No, no, it's not working. Right, I think I understand. Um, add commutativity only applies when the term you're trying to manipulate has only two terms in it. And right now, there are invisible parentheses in this term. Since addition is in lean left associative, there's a parentheses around that, a plus b, and then there's another invisible set of parentheses around a plus c. So we could swap a and b, that'll work. Let me show you, add commutative. And that a plus b should turn into, yeah, we just swapped that with that. I think if I say a and b, that will change, right, b plus a. So it is a little bit confusing. What we want to do, I think, is we can use a combination of commutativity and associativity to get what we want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite, let's just rewrite add associative and see what that gets us. Great, so that has moved our parentheses to the right, essentially. But now we have B and C. So I can give those two as an argument to add commutative, and then it will look like that. Add commutative C, B. Oh, B, C, my bad. There we go. Okay, so now the only problem here is these parentheses, well, we can reverse our associativity by applying it in the other direction. And now we have the same thing on each side of the equal sign and we're done. And that is addition world. So we have coming up multiplication world, power world, Functions, propositions, advanced propositions, advanced addition, advanced multiplication, and inequalities. So there is a heck of a lot here to play with. Um, the URL is up there. It's also, again, in the show notes. Please like, subscribe, add a comment. Um, it's still possible that I might actually do a let's play of Programming Language Foundations in Agda. If that's the sort of thing you'd like to see, please uh, leave a note and let me know. This has been Programming Like It's 1979. Thanks for watching. <laughs>